It's April 1, all Fool's Day, but there'll be no monkeying around in today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. In the program today, a call from the National Security Minister for us to unite and fight crime. We'll also explore an initiative to help inner city youth. And later, we mark Autism Month by looking at the activities of the Early Stimulation Plus Child Development Center. Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkins, and those and more on the other side of this break. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya, and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. Landowners, attorneys at law, real estate agents, listen up. Come April 1, the National Land Agency, NLA, will increase fees for certain land transactions. This is the first time fees are being increased in over 20 years as the NLA works to serve you even better. Applications for first registration and the transfer of property for value will be exempt from the increases. To get more information, contact the National Land Agency at 750-5263 or visit nla.gov.jm. Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, April 1. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is taking the lead to streamline government's response to the Zika and influenza A H1N1 viruses. Mr. Holness chaired an interministerial meeting at Jamaica House Thursday morning to strengthen the response in a more strategic, comprehensive and systematic way. The meeting involved ministers and senior officials from the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministries of Health, Local Government and Tourism. They discussed ways to facilitate closer collaboration across key response agencies and more strategic use of the available resources. The Office of the Prime Minister says government is committed to working with international partners and local stakeholders in the effort. At the same time, personal responsibility is being emphasized as citizens are urged to be vigilant and proactive. Agriculture Minister Carl Samuda has announced that some 3,000 acres of lands are to be irrigated to facilitate the expansion of the Agropark project in Clarendon. These will be at the Ebony Park and Spring Plain Agroparks. Minister Samuda was speaking at the 30th anniversary ceremony of the St. Mary Agri Expo on Monday. He also revealed that $190 million would be spent to expand the Agropark project in Portland and St. Elizabeth. Our strategy revolves around the development of our agro-parks because you can't farm without water. Irrigation is key to success in the agricultural sector. Work is set to begin this month on the renovation of classrooms and other facilities at the Warsaw Primary School in South Trelawney. The improvement work is being undertaken through a $10.2 million grant from the Government of Japan under its grant assistance for grassroots human security projects. The project is expected to ease the overcrowding at the institution. Through our assistance, uh, we hope that many young students will be able to study more comfortably and achieve better academic grades. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed extended gratitude to the government of Japan for their assistance. I firmly believe that one of the fastest ways to secure additional improvement in our education system is through partnership at every level of the education rung. And so when we get partnerships such as the Japanese to come in, this is going to aid us in realizing our dream of ensuring that we have quality education for all our students. The National Education Trust will oversee the procurement and construction management of the project. Government is to expand its partnership with the Micah University College to fill gaps in the area of special education. State Minister for Education, Youth and Information Floyd Green says this is to ensure that more students with learning challenges can receive timely intervention. Mr. Green says despite the gains that have been made, significant gaps still remain among the nation's teachers to detect children with special needs and appropriately address them. This is a priority area for our ministry and I take this opportunity to invite Michael to seize the opportunity to partner with us and to provide in-service training of teachers in special education. 
The Education State Minister was delivering the keynote address at yesterday's media launch of Michael's 180th anniversary celebrations. He said Michael's 180-year existence was a testament of effective stewardship by successive administrators, faculty and the student body. The Jamaica Customs Agency will be implementing a tax stamp system for the monitoring of alcohol and cigarettes. The system will be introduced on a phased basis. It allows for the authority to verify the authenticity of alcohol and cigarettes in trade and trace the products on the market. Commissioner of Customs retired Major Richard Reese made the disclosure during an interview with GIS News earlier this week. The ultimate aim is to be able to track and trace all imports of alcohol and cigarettes or alcoholic products that are manufactured. So it will protect revenue in terms of excise and it will also protect revenue in terms of customs duty. He explained that the electronic readable stamp would be placed on the products at the source. If the contraband enforcement team or the police do inspections or surveillance and detect alcohol or cigarettes without the requisite stamps, um, those goods will be confiscated as uncustom goods and they will be forfeited and the individuals will be charged. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Kerry Ann Smith. Thanks for watching. Tax Administration Jamaica is working to serve you even better. Have you used the upgraded electronic service RACE 2? Through this online platform, you can check statement balances, start the application process for a taxpayer registration number, file income tax returns, and much more. No lines, no hassle. It's just a click away. I like the system and it is very, very, very good. I find it um, user-friendly. Log on to jamaicatax.gov.jm or call 1-888-TAX-HELP for details. Use RAISE 2 and experience the upgrade. Pride is everybody's pride. And if all of us come together, we can stop it because there are more good people in Jamaica than bad people. We must make a conscious effort to be our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper too. Some people might call you fast, but if it is somebody who walks through your neighbor yard that you don't know, call to them. Because if it is your yard, you will want to call to you. Do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. Together, we can do it. Together, we can do it. Because we are Jamaicans. And anything we put our mind to as Jamaicans, we can achieve it. But we must believe it, conceive it, and then we will achieve it. So let us unite and come together so that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship, and amen, and play her part in the advancement of the whole human race. We just heard the passionate plea from the Minister of National Security for all of us to work together to help fight crime. One organization is already playing its part, partnering with the government to assist unattached youth, equipping them with the skills necessary for them to function in society and avoid a life of crime. Instead, I'm a new woman, walk up and down. Um, I can't just you know, say, yeah, wake up in the morning, I'm gone, at school, I'm gone, do something. We learned from some basic English and maths. Well, it's a wonderful experience dealing with the student from the inner city. Positive reviews from participants in a program to boost literacy, numeracy, and vocational skills. It's part of efforts to achieve strategic priority number four on government's agenda, human capital development, building the capacity of individuals so they can effectively contribute to the nation's growth. The Ministry of National Security through the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, has been working with non-government organization Operation Friendship as well as the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, JFLL, to offer remedial training to persons in vulnerable communities. CSJP, which targets unattached youth in volatile communities, recruits the youngsters. Operation Friendship facilitates the training at its institution and JFLL provides the math and English teachers. 
to deliver a 10-month free vocational program which was aimed at one improving literacy levels as well as your social skills with minimal exposure to general construction. Using aspects of the constant practicing teaching method, classwork, assignments, tests and projects, students were prepared for the hard trust entrance exam. If successful, they would move on to CSJP's vocational program, which provides advanced skills training at Hard Trust NTA. Okay, today we're going to be talking about synonyms. Have you ever heard the word synonyms before? Kind and generous. Vacant, empty. Messy and dirty. You had to work from the basic letter sounds and stuff into the other other areas of literacy. This is my first time teaching adults, so it was, the transition was a bit difficult but I mean I got into it the guys made me feel comfortable and you know so it has been good class what are we going to do today change, change decimal, decimal to percentage what are we going to do change decimal to percentage it's fun when teacher teach about percentage and them thing and teaching a little cheeky way to do it students are interested in learning right and they try their best to in mentoring discipline and stuff like that. And Mr. White is a living testament to what can be achieved if one is disciplined. Having been a participant in the CSJP, he completed his studies in primary education at the Micro University and is now empowering other young people. Administrators of the CSJP's pre-vocational training program worked tirelessly to educate and train the youngsters as they acted on strategic priority number four on government's list. Many of them felt very stigmatized and many of them had a low self-esteem which resulted from the fact that they were unable to read at levels that they should. But after intense work, a shocking revelation. 22 of the 25 students who took the Heart Trust entrance exams were successful, paving the way for them to move on to higher heights. I feel overwhelmed and I say yes, I achieve what I come for. That was the aim to pass the test and I say yes, I did it. I old school from 2005 and I doesn't take up a book at home and this program made me take up book and show interest of doing some work. I think the success can be attributed to the motivation, to the quality of the instructors that we had, to the fact that the youngsters um, had to do the work which was necessary. We were able to come up with a new design for the syllabus, which really sort of focused on what had to be done in order to get them through the exams. We are going to our next level, construction, getting a skill. But the participants already have a rudimentary understanding of general construction, which will give them an edge when they begin CSJP's vocational program, Advanced Skills Training at Heart Trust NTA. It teach me like to hold the hammer the right way. You don't hold the hammer down in the neck, you hold the hammer at the end, and you swing your wrists. Well, my mindset is to, to inform other young men out, outside, in and outside the community, just to show that we get off the road and can come down at Operation Friendship and, and get it further. I'm that star up in the sky, I'm that mountain peak up high, hey I made it, mm, I'm the world's greatest. To celebrate the achievement of the youngsters, a graduation ceremony was held at the offices of the JFLL. The results of a survey, the learner performance feedback, indicated that the program did much more than help participants pass the Heart Trust entrance exam. 87% indicated that their team building skills have improved. Excellent! 91%, want to listen to this, 91% indicated that their conflict management skills have improved. I'm that star up in the sky, I'm that mountain peak up high, hey, I made it. You can't really look at persons from the inner city and say they are not worth it or they can't make it. If you as a teacher just do what you have to do, teach them, love them, you know, just talk to them about reality and encourage them. Come to Operation Friendship. We are willing, we are able, we have the uh, manpower, 
we have the space and we have the motivation to help wherever it is possible. And I think that many of them see it now as a launching pad for greater things to do with their future. So CSJP, Operation Friendship and JFLL have been working together to achieve government's strategic priority of human capital development, improving numeracy and literacy levels of unattached youth while developing their social and vocational skills, building their capacity to make them employable and marketable so they can contribute to national development. Instilling good behavior in children is equally important as academics, and when they are well-behaved, they should be rewarded. Motivate the youngsters to continue. Here's an idea. Coming up in today's school zone, you are all here because you have been chosen by your principal as being the most disciplined class at your school. Plus, hello and welcome to In The Zone News. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ah, beautiful to have you here at Home Garden and Farm. We're in the hills of Cool Cool Manchester, looking at a program that's rewarding fine conduct and discipline in schools using nature. Here on the outdoors, looking on the beautiful landscape and landforms. What are landforms? Landforms are the shapes or surfaces of the land. With the confines of wood or concrete walled classrooms replaced by the open expanse of sky, trees, and nature's other little delights, these youngsters are enjoying a new learning experience. Grab a book, something. Pam's pet is a cat named Cindy. She has a long, fluffy tail. It looks like a powder puff. She licks it every day to keep it clean. It's an experience that pairs regular lessons with the teaching of positive values and nature excursions. I do remember what we say this is? Cassava. Right, it's cassava. And how many types of cassava are there? Two. Two, Two types, namely? Sweet, Sweet and bitter. Sweet and bitter. And bitter. And bitter. It's the brainchild of the owners and operators of the Home Garden and Farm Nature Park. We selected 18 schools between Manchester, St. Elizabeth and Westmoreland. When they came here to the park, we had the welcome. We had them do an outdoor class session, which is away from their classroom. And this was done under observation and they were graded according to certain criteria, measures. Some of which are whispering in class inappropriately, uh, fighting in class, unattentive during class session, among other criteria. What they knew about was the fact that they were going to be observed in the class, but they were not aware that they were also going to be observed for the rest of the day. Schools that score the highest are awarded with trophies and other prizes. We are so elated and it's all about discipline and it shows that discipline and hard work can truly be success. The Ministry of Education is on board. Because it would have impacted our students in schools and in, especially in the area of discipline. I want to find out from you, Rajni, what is it that you like so much about learning in this kind of environment? Miss, it is fun, Miss. What makes it fun? Miss, they do hard working. Okay. What about you, Nordia? What do you like about this environment? I think it hel it helps you to express natural feelings and the environment and how you express yourself to be free around this type of environment. They're not the only ones with high praises for the program. 
I think it's a very good program to get involved in because we all have students who are disruptive, who are not well behaved, but honestly when our students heard that there was a comp competition promoting discipline, everybody wanted to be the winner, right? Because we know everybody wants to win. So we observed better behavior from the students. Some of them, things that they used to do normally, they sort of cut down on it. It's not 100%, but improvement has been seen. I learned discipline and to behave properly. Practice good behavior and you'll reap good success. It's a problem free. And welcome to In The Zone News. I am Mrs. Kogiban. Recently, many students helped to clean up their schools. It was planned by the Ministry of Education to destroy the mosquitoes that spread Zikfi. Let's hear from one student. It's very important because we need to get away all the containers that hold water in it so that we can prevent the Zikfi mosquitoes from laying their eggs in the ponds or water and stuff like that so that we can prevent ourselves from getting sick. That's right students, prevent ZIGV, keep your environment clean and remember practice good behavior and you'll reap good success. My name is Jason Ricketts and I employ all youth with disability to not give up hope. There is a space out there for you, you just need to work hard and I'm sure that your training will help Jamaica move forward to meet Vision 2030 plan. The month of April is dubbed Autism Month and government through the Early Stimulation Plus Child Development Center is catering to the needs of children with autism and other disabilities. Let's take a look at some of their activities. How does it feel to be different from me? Are we the same? How does it feel? Since 1975, the Early Stimulation Program has been providing assistance to thousands of children with developmental disabilities all across the island, transforming their lives from black and white into living glorious technicolor, providing therapeutic and educational services for children with special needs. To broaden that objective, in 2006, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security expanded the activities of the program to include a Stimulation Plus, STEM Plus Early Childhood Development Center. We see children with cerebral palsy, we see children with uh, chromosomal disorders such as Down syndrome. We see children with intellectual impairment, uh, learning disabilities. We see children with autism and uh, a number of various conditions. After its initial assessment, the center implements feasible programs for those children aged three to six years to help them overcome their challenges. We have what we call a parent orientation that we sit with you and we explain what is happening or what might be happening with your child and look at a program how we are going to go about um, assisting this child developmentally. The case is discussed with the home intervention supervisor and other team members. Counseling sessions and workshops are also organized for the parents and guardians who have a difficulty accepting and dealing with their child's disability. In addition, STEM Plus has daily therapeutic treatment for the children. We have over 112 children. We have eight classes, and the children are not necessarily in classes according to their age, but based on their capabilities or their mental age, they are placed into classes. And so, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. weekday, the disabled children receive one and one attention, specifically tailored to their need to help improve their condition. Just take a look at some of the activities for these children diagnosed with cerebral palsy. 
They vary from using a swing to teach balance so that the children will be able to sit and walk properly to enjoying a ride on the peanut ball. So she is on the ball and we move her back and forth to straighten her upper body and get head control. Up Alicia, up, up, bring your head up Alicia, head up, very good, very good Alicia. Can you feel it, can you feel it, it's rough, it's rough. Others enjoy tactile stimulation techniques which uses rough and soft material to stimulate and differentiate between the senses. So we want to encourage Gabby to do hand-eye coordination stuff so she'll be able to see the object and pick it up. So go Gabby. We also do it in a sitting position to encourage Gabby to sit down, right? Pretty girl. Take up the block and put your hand around it. Woo! We got one! Nice girl! Ah, there are also activities to help these children with special needs to develop their literacy and numeracy skills. We use the music to teach the children to count, to teach them to, to identify the numbers, um, use their fingers and to interact. Parents who enrolled their children at Stimplus, which is operated by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, have seen first-hand improvements in their children with special needs. Melissa's daughter is diagnosed with autism, but things are looking up. Lots of changes. First things first, I credit them with having my child walk and run and even swing on a swing song by herself. Things that I didn't know that she could do on um, her own, that she wasn't doing at home. He's learning more to count, says ABC, as well as he comes, um, he can, he's doing a little writing, but you're fine. He's not holding the pencil as strong as you want him to, so he does the write as perfect as you're expecting him to. But he's trying to do a little more than what he was doing before, so you're seeing improvement. Chantoy, say ABC for mommy. She was slow with the letters. No, she knew all her letters. She knew colors. She's able to speak um, her mind freely. Um, what improvement? When the children reach the age of six, and I've made you know, the progress. We do have a graduation for them that parents look forward to seeing these children who were so delayed, you know, now going off. Off to other special education programs or the formal school system, some getting a chance to even do their GSAT, complete high school and university. And these are some of the things that inspire us to go on to help the children. There are children who come here and they're not talking and they leave talking. You know, things like that, that inspire us and encourage us to go on. So if you have a child or know of a child with a special needs... Just have faith and work with the child, just as um, Stimplus would work with them, right? And help them. Don't leave the teacher alone to work with them. Don't rough them. Don't, don't try to, you know, make them feel like them is nobody. My advice to them is, if you do have a child with disability, Stimulation Plus is the place for them to be. For more information, contact the Early Stimulation Program, 95 Hanover Street, Kingston, or the Ministry of Labor and Social Security in your parish. We've come to the end of Jamaica Magazine for this Friday. Thanks for spending time with us. Catch us again tomorrow on the station. And if you can't wait that long, join us online, jis.gov.jm, or YouTube channel, or other social media platforms. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and this has been Jamaica Magazine. Have yourselves a great evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.